You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 22nd, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we dare you to say rational Republicans again. Say rational Republicans again. I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say rational Republicans one more goddamn time. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. There was someone saying rational Republicans a lot this week. Yeah. Uh, Alice Stewart. (laughs) <laughs> um, who's just a horrible person and a cyborg sent from the future. You thought there was only one, right? You thought Hugh Hewitt was the only one. No, there's an army of them. And they're all zombies and they all stare at you with those dead eyes. And they all used to work for Ted Cruz for some reason. <laughs> and, and she was on CNN saying, well, rational Republicans would like this and rational Republicans. You know, there's an army of rational Republicans out there. And the other two ladies on the panel just didn't quite push back very much at all. It was kind of clear that we're going to let good old Alice get on the show and say whatever the fuck she wants. And what she wanted to repeat over and over and over and over and over again was rational Republicans who are genuine real things and are out there in large numbers and just want to move on from January 6th and talk about the failed Biden administration. That's what rational Republicans want. And everyone, Steve M mentioned this on Twitter, everyone on that side, the the non-Trump Republican Party yes. has gotten their marching orders, which are January 6th. We need to move on from that. The American people want uh, have other agendas in mind. Yes. And yeah, really? and it, it's do? everyone from Condi Rice to Mitch McConnell, believe it or not. I, I, I'm not surprised. Um, I, I And it wouldn't have stuck in my mouth in such a stinky, like dead mouse in there kind of way. Uh, if I hadn't come off of a uh, podcast uh, from our uh, allies of convenience who are never Trumpers, who repeated the phrase rational centrists over and over and over again. <laughs> so these these mopes are just strapping the word rational onto whatever they happen to think at the moment, and thereby everyone else is either irrational or not a real Republican or not a real centrist. And it's mm-hmm. the same it's the same game all these assholes play all the time, which mm-hmm. is, you know, Really, there's only really one position, which is weird for a group of people, especially these never Trumpers who who just preen and pride themselves on being non-tribal. This is I'm warned repeatedly uh, by Charlie Sykes that this is not a safe space. You know, we take on everybody. Well, no, you don't. You only have people on who basically agree with you that you and only you have the right point of view, and everyone else is either too far to the left or too far to the right. And if we hadn't been watching this happen in the media for decades already. If this wasn't the actual reason why the Republican Party, why your Republican Party got so far out of hand that they spit you out like a like a like a seed, like a like a chicken bone, uh, then I wouldn't care. But this whole bullshit about, well, it's the extremes on both sides and me and my three friends are in the middle. That's why you should send us your time and money. I'm I'm done with it. I'm done Mm -hmm. with it. And I I, it's there's no law that says I can stop it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it's I'm so fucking sick of it because it just it's the same record over and over again. Speaking of annual events, an important annual event happened this week in our home. In our home. Yes. Today. Yes. Uh, we're recording this on Thursday and today is Junior Dude's 23rd birthday. Yes. Can't be true. Can't. Uh, and nah. I'm nah. not old enough to have a 23 year old no. child. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and he was my wingman when I asked you to marry me. That's right. And, and he, he yelled out, say yes, say yes. And so I, I had to say yes. That you know? that that young man who I dandled on my knee could not mm-hmm. possibly be the same young man who's in the basement right now eating pizza and watching Hulu. And reading up on medical marijuana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is his current his current obsessive interest. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I can think of at least a thousand worse things to be focused on. Yes. Than becoming yes. the expert, the Midwest expert on medical marijuana. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, happy birthday to my son, our kid. Yes. Junior good guy. dude. All around and good guy. And who oh. did, I think we mentioned this last week, did complete his cross-continental sojourn. Um, none the worse for wear. Some stressful moments. You had to play... Air traffic control mom when he got into a little Oh, man. Little well, he hit a snowstorm. 
Yeah. So he and I eighty was closed through mm-hmm. Montana, and yeah, it was bad. So we so. directed him to a small town that has no name, and the Rod Serling was standing in front of the bar <laughs> where he walked in. Yeah, and, Wyoming. And five... We got him. We got him to the edge of Wyoming. I think. Yes. I think he was going through Wyoming actually when the he snow was. kind of. He ran out of juice mentally yeah. Yeah. to drive in snow anymore. So. Yeah. Anyway, it's all fine and good and he very got proud home of him. Safe. And, yeah. Yes, and he's doing all right, and uh, we're glad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everyone who wants to know these things, uh, next weekend is Drift Glass's birthday. That's true. That's very true. So, still not old enough for Medicare, although no. we, we we hold out hope that someday it'll be lowered. <laughs> someday, no. If if it goes anything like the drinking age back at the other end of oh, the that's right. arc of my life. <laughs> The um, day you turn 65, they'll lower it to 60. <laughs> yeah, of course, because that's right. that's how things are going for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, for lots of other people, um, it will be important. And, and you know, I have I have everything I want for my birthday. Yeah. I don't need, I don't want for anything. I, I, I would love, you know, to triple our number of listeners. I would love for the revenue from this podcast to, to leap, you know, olympically. But we have really great listeners we and do. really great supporters. Very generous. And Sweet I have... letters. We got a nice letter from Albuquerque this week. Yeah. We got another nice letter uh, from uh, California. Yeah. From uh, a federal employee in California who shall be nameless, who That's was right. very sweet to us. So it was a very nice long letter. Yeah. Um, we really appreciate hearing from you guys. Family's all, you know, for the most part, pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the middle child did exactly what I'm proud of her for doing. Um, uh, at this age, which has come home from college, ignore us entirely. Yeah. Uh, during the week that she was off, come by for you know cake for <laughs> for Junior Dude's birthday. Yeah. Very nice, and then blow the hell out of town because who wants right. to hang out with these old farts? Not no, me. She that's wanted to sure. be with her boyfriend, and that was fine. Yeah. So and and her boyfriend treats her sister very well. Yes, and, her boyfriend you know, is is sweet, and he does is kind to her sister, and her sister approves of him. Right. And that to me is a is a really good sign. Yes. yes, yes. Definitely. Everyone in their life needs people who are good barometers for the things they're not good at. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They uh-huh. don't have to listen to them, but I I <laughs> the number of times when I have taken a a friend aside back in my younger days, back in my dating days, said, you know, when you've wrapped your car around the same tree five times, maybe the tree is not the problem. <laughs> maybe you're the problem. <laughs> maybe you're making the same mistake over and over again, but he or she's different. Nah, not really. Not, not so much. You keep no. dating that same jerk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Eventually, you know, that's like the sunk cost of dating, you know, eventually yeah. one of these jerks is going to pay off. No, go to a completely different category mm-hmm. and then do that. Go go with the kind guy that you think is boring, and mm-hmm. then try him. Try it. <laughs> and the, the clatter in the background. We're recording this in a fry kitchen. Uh, <laughs> on... <laughs> no, we have Junior Dude raiding the fridge again. Right, right. Uh, we're going to start off very briefly talking about uh, oh, a former oh, guy and oh. his social media scam. The press release reads like an investment opportunity from a multi-level marketing company, just like every other Trump press release. Get in now, because yeah. it's going to take off. You well, know? it's wide open for fake accounts, we yeah. have discovered 24 hours later. Yeah. Droopy Wiener. Yeah. Trump Droop- has a small penis dot com. Mm-hmm. And real Donald J. Trump. <laughs> no one reserved the Donald Trump names on this Social yeah. media platform. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's the kind of advanced thinking you want from the leader of the free world and the people right. around him. And um, some one of my colleagues at Crooks and Liars noticed that uh, the website has uh, the flash component in their code. Yeah. Which was discontinued and is blocked on most websites and is mm-hmm. not available and Adobe doesn't support it. And Genius. You know, Genius. What you're saying is he's a genius. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and and pro- of course the the thing that set off fireworks in my head was Donald Trump promising it would come soon. <laughs> that sure. soon this website would be available to all in the next little while. In the next yeah, little just while, two weeks, you know, two weeks or so, whatever. Yeah. Just yeah. like his health care plan. Yeah, and like everything else, in a little yeah. while, a very short a- while. According It'll- to CNBC, um, this website uh, 
reserves the right to ban users and safeguard itself from lawsuits with Section 230 protections, Uh which, as you might remember, uh, when he was in the White House, he was ready to overturn that law with a stroke of his Sharpie. Yeah. Well, and this is Um, also he this is his own personal Twitter. Right. Because he can't go on Twitter and neither can I. So let's be clear. (laughs) We have this one thing in common. And but it's 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 he wants it to be a wide open. You know, anybody can say anything. Just come on in. Let's accept. You can't criticize him or his website. That's the one thing you can't do. You can't (laughs) talk shit about Donald Trump or his stupid website on his stupid website. And and also they pro the terms of service literally prohibit the excessive use of capital letters. Yes. I don't know how Donald Trump is going to communicate on this platform. Well, you know, I think they're like Twitter. I think there are special carve outs for special people. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. Uh huh. But the the website Truth Social yeah. uh, does make me wish that I could be an FBI agent for one day and sign oh, yeah. up as a single busty redhead who needs tax advice about selling an Indiana sourced handgun to my cousin, the ex offender. Mm hmm. Hey, hey, guys, my DMs are open. <laughs> Just let me know. You know, the, in the spirit of Christmas, my cousin, who I'm definitely not sleeping with, and I uh, definitely want to exchange gifts, and he wants to give me cash, and I want to give him several small handguns. So... <laughs> Uh, just like We've Santa already Claus. We worked and... it out what we want for our gift exchange. Yeah. Cash oh. for guns. I, I'm his secret armed Santa. <laughs> and he's mine. So is that okay? Is that cool? We don't want to attract any attention if you know what yes. I mean. And, you and know all what? of a sudden, Santa is with the Department of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Oh. And it's definitely coming down the chimney. <laughs> hey, guess who made the naughty list? Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. This is, a, this is a Twitter for stupid people mm-hmm. um you know the, and there's believe me, there's a plenty of trash stupid people all over twitter i remember it well and i still have contacts inside that world that let me know what's going on oh yeah really but, going on but, but, but does, the problem is and a columnist at the washington post pointed this out is that without liberals there right it's no fun to just talk to other trumpers well yeah what the fun point is, is that? that you're supposed to scream at the libs and own right. the libs. And if you're just sitting around talking guns with other uh, like-minded individuals, mm-hmm. that that gets old really quick. That's why Gab is failing. That's why Parler. Getter and all these other ones. Yeah. That just There's nothing to do there because you're not owning the libs. Just, so, just 100,000 assholes and Joe Manchin on, on it. <laughs> That's it. It's all that's there. Still searching for 10 good Republicans. Yeah. Yeah. Like Diogenes. He's just out there looking and looking and looking. And see, that's why I married this man, because it's immediately what jumps into his mind is like Diogenes. You know, like Diogenes. <laughs> me and Diogenes were down at the pub the other day, and I was talking to him, said, You think you can find the last guy in here? Let me tell you, you're no wrong. We're, we're drinking half of this. Half of this. You know, which is a, with Diogenes is going right. to be his next book, folks. which is a little heavy for this type of the year. But, you know, what are you going to do? The, the weather is changing. And I told him, Diogenes, look, you ain't going to find a guy who will tell you the truth. And he said, is that the truth? I said, yeah, of course, it's the truth. And he gave me his lamp and said, I found an honest man. And that's how that story ends. Uh huh. Speaking so, of truth tellers, Joe yeah. Lieberman has a new book out. Uh, radical truth tellers. <laughs> Joe, Radical truth tellers. I had so hoped that Holy Joe Lieberman was in in the rearview mirror forever, but of course he I can't know. be. No. He is he is the piece of centrist shit stuck to the shoe of democracy until he shuffles off this mortal coil, and someone will always find a reason to stick a microphone in front of his wizened dried or apple give head. Give him a book deal. Yeah, well that's the thing. He he got a. He proves that he was the rat fucker we always thought he was mm-hmm. uh, by telling all about it in his new book. Yeah, um, that was Wonkat's headline was proof that Joe Lieberman was rat fucker for the GOP surfaces in new book by Joe Lieberman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's very important, I think. And he's uh, is not a Regnery repress though, joint. It's a an independent publisher from New York City known for celebrity one-offs. Like Melody from The Young and the Restless. And... <laughs> And Mark Cuban. So, you know, that's who that's who Joe Lieberman's running with. Uh-huh. Uh, that crowd there. And I uh I I gave a listen. I thought I had put my Joe Lieberman scary face graphic away years ago. 
Uh, but of course not, because he was on the Washington Journal in his <sighs> home talking about his book. And I did go through the transcript. It hurt me to do so. You should all mm-hmm. know it caused me physical pain to do so. Uh, but uh, he has all the all the buzzy words and catchy click phrases that all the kids are talking about, like centrist and centrism and centrist in both parties and the center and compromise and settled for less than 100 percent and work across party lines. And the media has become partisan and Democrats are constantly doing something. And Republicans are doing it, too. Um, leaders like President Reagan and President Clinton and I've been working for this organization called No Labels, which made my heart just skip a beat. And, and last but not least, I get a bad rap for Obamacare. And uh, I wrote about this on my little blog and said, deep inside the weed show to Newsmax Worldwide News Substack tomb, Mark Halpern sprouts a tiny spectral boner. <laughs> um, Mark Halpern has left Worldwide News, apparently, is now on Substack where, you know, Oh all, no. Yeah. So it's just, they're still there. Um, and if we just don't disturb them, maybe they'll sink to the bottom and, and be covered by a layer of, of, I don't know, seashells and disappear forever. But every now and then somebody decides that it's time to dredge up this, this horribly irrefutably debunked bullshit about centrism. And they go find Joe fucking Lieberman out in the cornfield somewhere, not our cornfield though. And drag his ass in front of a microphone and let him say shit. And it's always the same thing. And he's always been terrible. And we all know it. And he was a joke for decades. And he's not quite back, but he's not quite dead. So, you know. Well, the thing that got me is that this new book on on centrism is marketed as a how-to book. Yes. How How to to fix our politics. Yes. Back in the good old days. You know. I don't know. Referring to 1520. I'm not sure which good old days he remembers. (laughs) But he, he just it's 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 such a it's time for this generation of centrist assholes to pass away. And by I don't mean die. I mean, go away. But the same centrist assholes who love these people are in charge of the networks and in well, charge of and, newspapers. And, and let's let's also acknowledge that the the headline that came out of this book mm-hmm. is that he beat Ned Lamont with help from Karl Rove. Yes. And Libby Dole. Yes. Oh, yeah. No. So this was the centrism bullshit is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. The, the thing that the thing that I think broke David Brooks's brain. Mm-hmm. I'm going back to 2005 now. Um, this is the old, old, old days when, when David Brooks was a fresh young face, the New York Times and his his indignant written with a pen of fire column called Party Number Three was all about how Joe Lieberman had been screwed out of his, because Joe Lieberman was entitled forever because he's a fellow traveler of David Brooks and a friend of his, and they speak the same language. And And, how how dare Connecticut Democrats choose another candidate than their dear incumbent Joe Lieberman. And he went on this fucking tirade about, you know, the the Tom DeLays of the right (laughs) and the Netroots Tom DeLays of the left being equally like, like the Sunni and the Shia, and they're fighting all the time. We need a center party. It's the McCain-Lieberman party. And the McCain-Lieberman party, of course, happened to line up with everything David Brooks believed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's fine as long as you're an asshole at the bar. You don't give these people New York Times op-ed columns for the rest of their lives. Because then at some point, some poor schmuck is going to believe these people know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. And yeah. David Brooks has been proven more wrong more often than anyone except Bill Crystal, who is still being dredged up and put in front of cameras on MSNBC. So, you know, the, the cycle of history, I'm just waiting for all these people to just to, to be too old to go on camera. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's that moment like Tom Brokaw just at some point became too old to put on camera. I'm just waiting for that because... And I know they'll be followed by a bunch of other dregs, but I'm tired of these dregs monopolizing the the public square that should actually be in the hands of people who weren't wrong about everything their entire right. life. Right. Anyway. I, I have a request for our listeners. They've done a very good job of spreading the both sides don't. Yes. Gospel. Um, it's time to stop being fooled by Eric Trump. <laughs> Eric Trump went on TV and and he's always doing this thing of... You know, if my father had done that, he would be impeached for it. Or if my father did that, it would be in every paper in the country. And of course, it's always something that liberals on Twitter 
immediately point out with links that's exactly what your father did do. Yes. But Eric Trump is going on Maria Bartiromo or Hannity and saying these things right at the juncture where daddy is, as as in this week, giving a deposition on police brutality among his security officers. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then a month, exactly a month before that, Eric Trump was on TV on Maria Bartiromo doing exactly the same shtick of, you know, my father would have never done that. The liberal media would have slayed him the week that the, the uh, Fury book came out or the Peril book came out. Excuse me. Bob so when the Woodward books come out, Eric Trump goes on television and makes some outlandish statement that immediately left wing Twitter who love, believe me, I love a good fact check, <laughs> mm-hmm. but fact checking Eric Trump. Yeah, no, no, it's no. it. He is playing us and whether he's too dumb to play us and someone on Fox who's way smarter than Eric Trump is playing us. And telling, I mean, I'm sure it, what everything Eric Trump says on Hannity is scripted for him. Mm-hmm. But someone's playing us with that. So um, don't I don't know what the answer is, whether it's just to ignore him and move. And But I do think every time Eric Trump's on, it's a really good idea to go find out what's going on with Trump's legal woes. Yes. With his dad's legal woes. And amplify that. And the story isn't Eric Trump said something that is easily contradicted and totally hypocritical. It's Eric Trump is on Fox to distract us from this. The horrible thing that's happening to yeah, his daddy Donald right Trump's now. had to show up for a deposition in mm-hmm. a case where his employees beat up protesters. Right. You know, that's that's, that's the story this week. Um, and, and now it's time for Drift Class. Talk about uh, Colin Powell. Yeah, um, I have nothing to say about Colin Powell personally. Never met the guy. Um, I know that he was uh, integral in lying us into the wrong war, the worst uh, foreign policy debacle since Vietnam, possibly the first uh, worst foreign policy debacle ever, if depending on how you measure things. Um, and he died this week, and he died of complications of COVID. And he died because he um, was immunocompromised. He took all the proper precautions. And there's lots of things about Colin Powell's career that are laudable. So all that's been said a million times. What I want to talk about was the Colin Powell is another one of the unexploded IEDs from the Iraq war. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, the media and the right have always depended on lying about or burying or otherwise distorting the past. That's how they operate. That's their business model. And the Iraq war screwed all that up for a while and in in a very specific way. The right, I'm sure you all remember, loved gloating about George Bush's genius and their collective patriotism. Where's your fucking flag pin, libtard? Uh, And the media, by and large, just fawned all over George Bush. Could do no wrong. Everything is the great, brilliant, everything's going wonderful, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That went on for several years. While it was pretty clear to everyone on the left that things were going horribly wrong, it was the collective opinion of the right and the mainstream media that everything's great. And it's all just liberals hating George Bush because they have have Bush derangement syndrome or some other thing. And just pay attention. Don't pay attention to any of that. And then it all went to shit. And it broke the right's collective brain because the one thing that you're never allowed to do on the right, the one thing that just kills them is admitting they were wrong. The only way you're ever allowed to be right or wrong on the right is to not have been conservative enough, okay? Now, this is especially bad in this case because they were so loud about it. They were braying about it. They were parading about it. They were poking people in the chest. They were flying their flags. They were screaming about George Bush being genius. They, it was everywhere. That It wasn't they were wrong about a little thing. They were wrong about the biggest thing in the universe. And what made it so much worse The thing that really, really drove the stake into the middle of their skull was being wrong about something liberals were right about. Mm. Having their nose rubbed in the fact that the left was fucking right and they were wrong, which is something you will never, ever hear a Republican say. They would rather pull their own heads off than say that. But the evidence was all around them, right? There There was no way to deny it, except they did. They became the Tea Party and pretended they'd never heard of George Bush, and that solved that problem. 
And that was the way that the right solved the problem of being humiliatingly wrong about George Bush when it came to the economy, when it came to Iraq, when it came to Katrina, when it came to every goddamn thing. They just pretended they'd never heard of the guy. And they would never have gotten away with it but for the fact that the mainstream press, press was equally humiliated by George Bush's historic, catastrophic failure. George Bush was arguably the worst president in history before Donald Trump. And this all came to, came to a head uh, in the media when they just decided not to talk about Iraq anymore. <laughs> they just, just stopped talking about it. And then time passed and, and, and calendar pages flew off and years went by. And suddenly it became the sort of the consensus opinion that maybe Iraq was a mistake. Like, well, wait a minute. No, 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 no. When did that happen exactly? At what point did you all decide that Iraq was a fuck up? And where are the apologies to the millions and millions and millions of liberals that you shit all over by, and, and advanced your careers by um, by calling us stupid and calling us crackpot and calling us alarms? When did that happen? It didn't happen. It just everyone just, you know, we're not going to talk about it for a really long time. Then we're all going to say, hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe Iraq was a bad idea. Let's move on. And Donald Trump finished that job. By telling the right, by closing that circle and saying, you know what? You know what? Actually, you were the victims here. Mm -hmm. You were the people who got screwed. George Bush lied to you. You weren't cheerleaders for this bullshit. You didn't actively go along with this bullshit. You didn't literally wrap your identity around this bullshit. You didn't build your media presence by calling the left traitors and monsters and America-hating, terrorist-loving scum. No, 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 no. You were the victims of all this. And so when Colin Powell told the truth, when, he, when Colin Powell finally passed away, suddenly Colin Powell is a guy who attacked Republicans. Donald Trump put out this horrifying press statement about how Colin Powell is a, basically a, a dirty bastard. You know, couldn't be trusted. He's a rhino, can't be trusted. He attacks Republicans, but I suppose, you know, everyone's saying, oh, whatever, I hope they're nice to me when I die. And and Colin Powell's death reignited all this. The reason I called it an IED was we never properly litigated what happened in Iraq and afterwards, mm -hmm. ever, because the right could not, would not refuse to, and literally change their identity, slapped a new coat of paint on their party and said, we were never there. We never did that. It wasn't us. La, 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 la. And the media went right along with it because the people in the media who supported the Iraq war and called the rest of us crazy are all still there. Mm -hmm. David Brooks is still there. Bill Crystal is still there. All these assholes are still there. And so it was, it's incumbent upon them to keep the past buried. And the problem with that is they keep accumulating more past that has to be buried even further. Mm -hmm. And so Donald Trump just said, oh, this is great. All I have to do is, since we've already almost completed the process of lying about the Iraq war, the left never existed. The right was never wrong. It's all George Bush's fault. And, you know, Colin Powell was a screw up. So you, at the end of this, you have as Colin Powell's public um, commentary from people all around the, the all around social media, you have on the right, he was a monster, he was a bastard, he was not even a Republican. We hate him. On the left, like remember he lied us into that war. <laughs> you remember that? Remember well, how and that don't happened? forget that who was sit, who was standing on the stage with Donald Trump in 2015, but Jeb. Yeah. Well, that's the and thing. That's that was the choice. It was going to be Jeb or Rubio. Mm -hmm. And if it's Jeb, you know, you have to really swallow the fact that, oh, the establishment Republicans are going to choose the nominee and you're going to like it. And that right. was the last time the mob tolerated that kind of crap. And right. and that's why they all went for Trump. Well, and that's that's the bargain they made with Romney in 2012. Right. Exactly. Gonna Romney have... was going to win in a landslide well, and, and kick out the Kenyan usurper. Right. Yeah. Right. And Romney was was kind of a little in the in the mold of a Jeb. He right. was that establishment, rich, clueless, mm -hmm. um, uh, pretty awful when it comes to policy, mm -hmm. um, well spoken Republican elite asshole that Republicans actually hate. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and but the problem is, Republican voters shouldn't hate George Bush. They should hate themselves. <laughs> they did this. They elected this guy. They reelected this guy. They're the people who are at the convention with their little purple fingers in the air. Right. They're the people who swift boat who fell for the swift boating of John Kerry. All the, the purple band-aids. Yeah. yeah. All the Republican Party is the problem. And the fact that the Republican Party is 
is emotionally and psychologically incapable of recognizing this. Their whole identity is now based on lying about who they really are. Well, and th- take me then from that point in history mm-hmm. where they went for Trump. Right. In order to erase the Bush stink. The Not Bush erase it. They, 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 this was George Bush. Oh, they was, were victims. Yeah. They were the, we were the victims. We were the yeah. victims here. You know. Okay. But take me from that to Iowa today, this week. Mm-hmm. Where Jordan Klepper from Daily Show, I mean, uh-huh. I'm not saying his right name right, but you know he's interviewing people at a Trump rally, saying, "Oh, it wasn't Trump supporters January 6th; it was Antifa, right? It was BLM." That? Well, and and absolutely staring at you, saying Donald Trump's still president and still in charge of the military, and we need to trust the Q plan. How far down do you have to go to avoid responsibility? Well, once they made the deal with the devil, which mm. I, I, I contend came after the Clinton administration, mm. the people who invented a, a whole portfolio of things to demonize Bill Clinton about, because the Cold War was over. They didn't mm. have communists to hate anymore. They still had liberals. So they decided to make us, you and me, and by extension, Bill Clinton, the greatest enemy to freedom history has ever known. Mm-hmm. And they decided before he had ever been sworn in that they were going to take him out. They decided before he was even sworn in that they were going to dump their debt in his lap and 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 refuse to pass anything of any consequence that he ran on until he fixed their problem. And when he gave them and gave them and gave them all the stuff they asked for, they impeached his ass. Mm-hmm. And establishing a predicate that if you have any doubts about a president at all, if, you, if there's a whisper of, of controversy, you should impeach his ass. And if his election is any is in any way in doubt, he's not really the president. That was all Clinton. That all happened during the Clinton administration. Mm-hmm. Then along comes Bush, who's who really was not elected to office, right. really was <laughs> stolen, really did shit that was impeachable. And the Republican Party is sitting there with their dick in their hand, going, "I don't know who Clinton was. I don't know what, what are you talking about. That happened in the past. That's not." And at that moment, they just dis- they discovered the magic power of lying. Mm-hmm. That I just lie about everything. The thing I said at the beginning of the sentence, I'm going to lie about at the end of the sentence. And if you try to hold me to that, you stupid liberal, I'm just going to look at you like you're a moron because none of it matters. All I care about is hating you and and power. That's mm-hmm. all I care about. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't care if the world burns. I don't care if the economy crashes. I don't care if there's a pandemic. I don't give a good goddamn about any of it. My entire identity is wrapped up in hating you. Not even you, but this caricature of you that Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity have been shitting into my skull for 30 years. Okay, but how does that connect then to the death cult that we see popping up? Of God, God wants you to die, says the school board member. Right. If God wants you to die, you're going to die. So I'm not going to put a mass mandate or a vaccine mandate on. What's because... the alternative? What's the alternative? The alternative is to admit you're wrong. Right. The Democrats mm-hmm. were right. They would rather die. I'm telling you. And I wrote yeah. this this thing about, you know, a st- I had a stick figure post about this disembodied voice telling that, telling this cartoon character that the only way to prove your loyalty is to put a gun in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Or, or are you gay? Huh? Or, or do, do you want to have gay sex with that Kenyan? I bet you, I bet you won't even put your gun in. I bet you're not a real Republican. And these assholes will be double dog dared into the grave before they will ever change who they are. I, we say this every week, but I don't think you understand what the implication is, or some of you don't, which is they would rather die than admit they were wrong. And at this point, COVID is a, is a hoax. Vaccines will turn you into a lizard person. Mm-hmm. Masks are fascism and a slippery slope to concentration camps. Because the alternative is COVID's real and Donald Trump is lying to us. Mm -hmm. Um, masks, uh, masks are actually a thing that could help us get out of this thing, which means my favorite news sources have been lying to us and vaccines are efficacious and useful, which means that my favorite news sources have been lying to us. And these people would rather die and take the rest of us with them than admit any of that. So this all comes down to, I can't admit I was wrong. Mm -hmm. I can't be wrong. I can never be wrong. I, if I wait long enough, then I'll just pretend it never happened. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and my friends in the media who are equally complicit in this bullshit will will drive my getaway car. Mm-hmm. I don't need to I don't need to uh, worry about being held responsible for the Iraq War because David Gregory will just back the car up and and take me everywhere I want to go. David Gregory will just keep putting Newt Gingrich on the air until the end of time. So it is these deeply evil people, 
and stupid people um, on the right who have fallen down a hole they can never get out of. Now, can I can I read you one thing? Sure. I'm going to jump ahead in our notes a little bit. Oh, sure. I hope fine. you don't mind. I'm reading a lovely book my wife bought for me called The Reason for the Darkness of the Night, which is about Edgar Allan Poe and the forging of American science. Who wrote it? John Tresh. Not Tesh. Tresh. T-R-E-S-C-H. Okay. And it's awesome. Oh, good. Um, it's about, I'm up to the part in the 1840s where the world is full of science and it's also full of charlatans. Hmm. And no one knows what to believe because everything seems equally miraculous. And there's a small group of actual scientists who are really getting worried that the charlatans are taking over because they put mm -hmm. on a better show. They, they, they use daguerreotypes and they use uh, magic lanterns and they put on and they put music behind everything and they, they put Bible verses in, in, in things. And that there really needs to be a group of actual scientists Mm -hmm. who will determine if something is bullshit or not. Mm -hmm. And the fight over who gets to uh, determine what real science is. M mind you, this is the peak of phrenology. Yeah. this is, well, And this is the same kind of transformation of society in the late 19th century brought about by electricity. Yes, yes. That has been brought about by the cell phone. Absolutely. I mean, just day and night. Oh, my God, we are now living in an age of wonders. It, it, and everybody it, thought... We are now, this is what modern is, right? In the Absolutely. late 19th century. Modern is electrification. And so then, like you say, charlatans take it to yeah. another place, well, right? And and the um, and Edgar Allan Poe was a science writer as well. He read everything. He wrote everything. He was a very firm critic. He had very rigorous standards of literary excellence. And he was basically at this point dying of poverty. Mm -hmm. um, he, one magazine had collapsed, one adventure after another had fallen apart. And yet he's got a head full of knowledge and knows, you know, he's a really good writer and knows what's going on. The, the chief, the number one charlatan of the time was a guy with the awesome name of Dionysius Lardner. Oh my God. <laughs> and Dionysius Lardner um, just made shit up, <laughs> you know? And he and declared himself to be a doctor and a lawyer. And, and, and he was ha like on the run from two failed affairs and illegitimate children. And he had a really sketchy past, but he was like P.T. Barnum. Mm -hmm. he, he put on a great show. And, 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 and what he did was he purported to explain the complexities of the universe in a way that made the masses happy mm -hmm. and gave them what they wanted. And th this is the passage I wanted to read. I, actually, I wanted to read the whole chapter, but my wife wouldn't let me. So let me no. just do this one thing. <laughs> Um, between 1841 and 1845, Lardner's lectures and publications earned him an astronomical $200,000, hmm. nearly $6 million today. The penniless Poe couldn't help but envy such a haul, though he disdained the performer's bad taste and quack aspects. Music and mechanical effects could cover a multitude of intellectual sins. The effectiveness of such gimmicks, like the, quote, namby pamby establishments that Poe thought debased Graham's magazine, a magazine he worked for at one time, only proved how easily the masses could be captured with noise, excitement, bright lights, and sentimental nonsense. As Poe wrote, the nose of the mob is its imagination. By this, at any time, it can be quietly led. Mm. The people... They all wear MAGA hats. They now wear <laughs> MAGA hats. And you can now lead them to their own grave. You can make them dig their own grave. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. think they're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's... And that's the world we now live in. And these people yeah. have a very close to a majority in Congress. Mm -hmm. They have uh, a majority on the court, on the Supreme Court. They're taking away voting rights from people they disagree with in, in every state where they can get their grubby little fingers in the levers of power. Yeah. So this is not about phrenology anymore it's not about hot air balloons or magic thing or magic of electricity this is about our democracy and this mob is being led by monstrously evil people and there's no control over it there's mm -hmm. no federal agency there's no higher authority to appeal to mm -hmm. there's just it's the marketplace mm -hmm. That's, we've decided that we're going to let news be decided by the marketplace mm -hmm. and the marketplace loves noise and excitement and controversy and hates facts and unpleasantness and, and one of the unpleasantnesses of our age is a very large generation that is facing their own mortality and doesn't like it. Yes. 
Yes. And so when you have a whole bunch of people turning 65, 70, 75, 80, whatever, um, it, there's probably some comfort in feeling like you have control over, you know, I'm go- I, I'll die for Donald Trump or I'll die for quote unquote truth, right. vaccine truth. Well, the, and the, if God wants me to die, I'll die for that cause. And they've attached themselves to something larger than themselves. Right. And they have a community. Right. So probably some of them the first time in their lives have a mm-hmm. community. Well, and they're, you know, collectively, their children hate them. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, yeah. They're, 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 their kids can't stand them, think they're crazy. That, and... that is a very large trend that we've been reading about. Um, mm-hmm. The number of people who are not in touch with their parents because of politics is generationally huge. Yeah. And and people aren't talking about that in the mainstream media, I think, because it's too psychically painful for both of those audiences to talk about. But make no mistake, people are not speaking to their parents and parents are spending elderly parents are spending Christmas alone because yeah. their kids will not have it. Well, and I'm reading another slim volume that a friend of ours dropped off that I, I'm not sure about the title. It's like the deceased church. Yeah, it's um, autopsy of a deceased church, something yeah. like that. Who yeah. did a, a survey of a bunch of uh, churches that just collapsed and fell apart and and turned inward, and there were certain characteristics of those churches. And 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 I'll leave out the prayer part yeah. and the the baptism part, but it really was when the institution turns inward mm-hmm. and doesn't mm-hmm. want to hear anybody other than who they want to hear from, and mm-hmm. doesn't want to be part of a community that doesn't look like them anymore, right. and doesn't want to actually do outreach to anyone. And only new members who look and sound like them are welcome inside the church. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. said that church is 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 years, just a few years away from dying. Mm-hmm. There's no way to renew themselves because they've decided that reaching out to the rest of the world, engaging the world, engaging the, the world that looks strange to them, but still it's the world and that's what we're here for, is no, we don't want to do that. We want to mm-hmm. be comfortable. We want the money to be spent on us. Mm-hmm. And we basically, as I've said before, we want to have an, we want to shovel off to an air conditioned grave mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the rest of the world can go hang. And that really is the entire Republican party at this point. And I mean, the entire Republican party, there's no good ones left. So we found that out this week. Yes, we did. Uh, and, and just related to that, if you search Twitter this week for when Trump dies as a response to his disgusting post about Colin Powell. I hope when I die, everybody's talking nice about me like they are about Colin Powell. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you search Twitter for that, you'll see plenty of munchkins dancing and singing ding dong. <laughs> mm-hmm. As I said, Margaret Thatcher, eat your heart out. Um, <laughs> uh, file under men telling on themselves yeah. uh, at the Proud Boys Fall Love Fest rally in Los Angeles last Saturday, the speaker announced that many of them are single and looking for housewives. This was followed up by Tucker Carlson and other right-wing winners like Seb Gorka dissing paternity leave because Pete Buttigieg took it. Uh, I don't know what to say. Yeah. (laughs) Then, I don't know. (laughs) They're available. (laughs) They're all available. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you want to talk about hyper objects and politics? Yeah, just very briefly. Um, as you know, I listen to the opposition podcast, and I'm not going to go down that. I've already gone down that far enough for today. Uh, but I learned a, a phrase I didn't know existed called hyperobjects, which is a term uh, coined by, let me make sure I get the, the title right, uh, in a book called Philosophy and Ecology After the End of the World by Timothy Morton. And Hyper objects come down to this, a, 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 a thing, a problem, a, a something so big and complicated, you can't think about it clearly. Like, and the, the example he uses is climate change. Mm-hmm. Climate mm-hmm. change is huge. And, you know, explain to someone in a bar over a beer why one or two degrees in earth normal temperature is catastrophic. It's like, but, you know, temperature goes up in my apartment by two degrees like every hour. How can that mm-hmm. be bad? Mm-hmm. So it's such a big problem that you can't. The average person living the average life can't think about it, can't mm-hmm. process what that really means. Mm-hmm. Um, and our politics has that aspect. There's so many things going wrong all at once. And the way I cope with this is I can't solve climate change, but I know carbon emissions are bad. Mm-hmm. And so I will support any policy that lowers them and any policy that brings clean energy online fast. 
Mm -hmm. that I know about. I can do something about that. I can vote that. I can live my life that way and so forth. There's so much going on in in politics, voting rights, economy, COVID, et cetera. You name it. There's there's a bunch of shit crashing all around us. But if you Mm -hmm. look carefully, almost all of them have the same source. Republican. Mm -hmm. I don't have to know everything there is to know about immunology to know that if Republicans were removed from the equation, we would be out of the COVID problem already. Mm -hmm. I don't have to know everything there is to know about voting rights history to know that if the Republican Party didn't exist, voting rights would not be under threat in this country. Mm -hmm. The economy would not be on the verge of collapsing because of debt ceiling bullshit. And we know that because both sides don't. Right. So- my solution to sort of the overwhelming fire hose of bullshit that comes through the, the news box every day is I don't need to know everything about everything. I need to know one thing, one important thing, that is the destruction of the Republican Party is the only way we're going to get out of this mess. They are the problem. They are, they are the root source of virtually every problem you can think of in this country. And getting them the fuck out of the way, breaking them and driving them back into the goddamn sewer from whence they came should be the number one project of every person listening to me today. Mm -hmm. And whatever that means, knocking doors, contributing, whatever, however that manifests itself in your life, telling a a friend or family member you will not talk to them anymore as long as they're spouting crazy nonsense, Mm -hmm. whatever that means. But they're the problem. And this is not, there's no way to both sides this. They are the problem. Mm They are what's killing this country. If you have an R after your name, you are the problem. And I don't care about the goddamn outliers. If mm-hmm. if they find another six Liz Cheney's, what does that mean? Does that mean- that uh, She voted against voting rights. Right. Well, let, let's pretend that she's the good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, in 2022, Republicans take the House. Let's let's say, let's, let's pretend. If they have six more Liz Cheney's, does that mean Kevin McCarthy isn't the Speaker of the House? No. No. So even the good ones, the quote unquote good ones, if they have an R after their name, they need to be- Exile We're going to have two years of Hunter Biden laptop. Right. It doesn't matter. That's where, and no progress on family leave or health care or anything. And, and you can see the schizophrenia of mm-hmm. our friends on the Never Trump movement in that they are every day on their podcast begging for some Republican out there somewhere to show the backbone of standing up to your crazy ass party and just doing something right. Just voting on something to quit letting them be crazy. Stay, even if it risks your job, even if it, even if it risks you not being reelected for God's sakes, our democracy is at stake. Why don't you stand up against the madness? And I say, well, that's great. That's a great advice. How about this though? How about instead of doing that or while you do that, h- how about we get Joe Manchin to do the crazy risky thing of supporting his own fucking party. And to that, all of the same Never Trumpers say, what are you crazy? Are you crazy? That's insane. That's ridiculous. No, you all have to capitulate to this one guy. That's how we move forward. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. how you know they're a bunch of fucking hypocrites. Yeah, that, that want their tax cuts. That's all yeah, it that's, is. That's yeah. all they care about. That's yeah. all they care about. Joe Manchin is keeping us ravening socialists at bay. Mm-hmm. And so it is Jeff, our I, job. I want to. I want to make sure that we're talking about Republicans in power. Yep. Um, and keeping them out of political power. Yes, we are. Uh, we're not talking about your friends and neighbors that you work on sidewalk issues with, because no. there are times that locally you can work with somebody on a yes, sidewalk you issue. Yes, you can. Um, we have a listener who's a Republican who sends a small amount of money every once in a while and mm-hmm. and pictures of his grandchild to say, That's great. "I'm a Republican. I love my grandkids. You know, at least I love my grandkids." And um, it, it, I was reminded of him last week at church because there's a person who's on a committee with me who uh, we disagree on everything politically. And in fact, I, I had to laugh because at one Sunday school class, he said, you know, I've almost had too much with Hannity. He's going a little too far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, Breakthrough. But I talk, so instead of talking, even bringing up any politics with him, because we're both at church. Mm-hmm. I was asking about his grandkids. Mm-hmm. And last week he told me his granddaughter is really sick mm-hmm. and she's two. And I can't talk about sick two year olds without crying. You know, I can't. I know. And we pray for her. Yeah, I've been praying for her all week. Mm-hmm. So um, we want to keep Republicans out of power so that little sick two year olds have a future. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. No, it is. It is. There's no conflict between wanting your neighbors. I mean, this is what we fight for, right? Right. We we want everyone to have clean air and clean water and decent health care and decent education and decent housing. That's what we want. And Republicans hate all those things just because we want them. Yeah. I also want to um, say hi to, uh, we, we do this often, but say hi to Andy in England. Hey, because Andy. I'm about to talk about the queen. <laughs> <laughs> The royal family, which I have mixed feelings about the royal family. I know Andy in England does too. Um, but the Queen, I, as you may know, went full Greta Thunberg mm-hmm. <laughs> and said, they're all talk and no action about the nations of the world when it comes to climate change. We also, uh, because we watch church from Canterbury Cathedral morning prayer every day, mm-hmm. uh, found out that um, Prince William and his yep. wife, the Duchess of Cornwall, mm-hmm. are uh, working on climate change mm-hmm. and using their foundation to fund uh, nonprofit organizations around the world that are doing things to fit to help the climate. And it's putting money where small projects are happening in India and other parts of the world where they're just making things a little better. And what I loved about this. Uh, Duke and Duchess of Cornwall thing is they broke it up into what I have always talked about when it comes to climate change, right. clean air, clean water, safe and sane land development. You know, it mm-hmm. was things like that where the human mind can digest that and you don't debate it. If you're talking about climate change, people, because it's such a big problem, mm-hmm. people can uh, turn off their brains to it. Right. But if you're talking about clean air, <laughs> yeah. that's called a no brainer. <laughs> well and, and clean drinking water, a no brainer. In the in the good news department. Yeah. Um today New York City is announcing its public pensions are fully divesting out of the fossil fuel industry and into Yay. renewables, which is a Yay. shift of about fifty billion dollars. Yay. Which ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. Yeah. 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 Hey, let's do a news roundup. All right. I, I just want to say I glanced over my shoulder to see what uh, MSNBC is bringing into our home, and it's uh, it's uh, Steve Schmidt talking with uh, Nicole Wallace about whatever. <laughs> and I just I'm reminded of I take comfort in the fact that 160 70 years later, no one remembers who Dionysius Lardner is, <laughs> and everyone knows who Edgar Allan Poe is. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I'll just take a little comfort in the long, long arc of history. Yes, you will. Mm -hmm. This week in, yes, every single Republican news, every single Senate Republican voted against Joe Manchin's weak tea, bipartisan compromise voting rights bill. Mm -hmm. This was Manchin's heavily promoted compromise, which Manchin wrote to replace the For the People Act, but not Ben Sasse, not Susan Collins. Yep. Surely the hero of the resistance, Mitt Romney, voted for it. Nope. What about Lisa Murkowski? She helped draft the damn bill. She must have voted for it. Nope, not one for Manchin's bipartisan Republican pals supported it. Not one of them. Not one of them. They're all terrible. It's an easy thing. It's like true north. If you doubt whether something is good or bad, take out your compass, see which way the Republican Party is pointed, and go the opposite direction. They're all terrible. Mitch McConnell... Uh, immediately denounced the compromise legislation, saying it's the same rotten core is still there, which tells me that he's scared to death of it. Oh, he's terrified. He and and I I hate Mitch McConnell with the hate of ten thousand sons. You know mm-hmm. I do, but I respect his ability to count votes and read poll numbers. Yep. And everything that he's saying to reporters this week was, we've got to move on. Right, let's move on. <laughs> we can't be talking about 2020 anymore. No, 2020 is almost behind us. Let's 2022 go... needs to be a referendum on Joe, on the Joe Biden failures. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> In other words, please, Donald Trump, show, shut up, shut mm-hmm. up, shut up. And no, his party is lost to him. The actual voters are lost to Mitch McConnell. Yeah, well, and, and Mitch, of course, McConnell, Mitch McConnell spent... 10, 12, 20 years ignoring them. So, hey. Well, and Mitch McConnell knows the only way forward for his party is to dynamite anything. The Obama playbook. Yeah. Sabotage everything that that 
Biden tries to do and then blame Biden for not getting it done. Right. And right. his his gamble, which is not a terrible gamble, is that the majority of voters are too stupid to know how government works. Right. 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 And they'll just blame the person at the top and the party in power. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All the Bush dead enders or have their marching orders. It's time to move on from January 6th. Condi Rice and Mitch McConnell both said so this week. Uh, this is from Mother Jones, Virginia GOP candidate Glenn Youngkin from Mother Jones, uh, Virginia GOP candidate Glenn Youngkin financed a PAC that supports 2020 deniers and 1-6 apologists. Biden lowered the new tax and spending proposal to between $1.75 trillion and $1.9 trillion, telling Democrats during a private meeting that he believed they could secure a deal at that level. While that number is not finalized, it is far closer to Joe Manchin's $1.5 trillion top line, but a significant reduction from the $3.5 trillion that Democrats initially pursued. I'd like to remind everyone that initially is doing a lot of lifting here. Yes, it is. Initially, Democrats asked for $6 trillion, roughly the equivalent of what we spend uh, on the military. And Democrats cut that in half to $3.5 trillion at the request of people like Joe Manchin. And Joe Manchin has discovered that all he has to do is hold his breath until he turns blue and eventually he'll get whatever he wants. Because we care about these things and we'll take one eighth of a loaf rather than nothing, even though people will scream that Joe Biden's a failure, and liberals don't care, and blah, 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 blah. That's the business of politics these days. This is an actual title of an article uh, from Megan McCain's husband's website. The title is For Christians Dying from COVID or Anything Else is a good thing. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol voted unanimously to recommend charging Steve Bannon with criminal contempt for defying its subpoena. Okay. I, I wait, I'm waiting for the cops to show up. Mm -hmm. uh, the Westchester County District Attorney's Office subpoenaed property tax records related to the Trump National Golf Club in Ossony, New York. I believe Ossony, New York is where Sing Sing Prison is, so it's just a short walk across the green to where he, I hope he's going to spend the rest of his life. The Trump administration discussed sending 250,000 troops to the southwest border at the start of the coronavirus pandemic, more than half the U.S. Army and a sixth of all American forces. Trump's Defense Secretary Mark Esper quashed the idea following what has been described as a brief contentious confrontation with Stephen Miller in the Oval Office. Had Trump gone through with the deployment, it would have been the largest use of military inside the U.S. since the Civil War and dwarfing the American presence in both Afghanistan and Iraq at the height of the war. What They were going to like occupy New Mexico and Arizona. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. you know, once you start deploying the U.S. military inside the United States, mm -hmm. if you're of a fascist inclination, it gets real easy to start um, locking people up, mm -hmm. kicking mm -hmm. down their doors. Make Sounds them like go something Stephen Miller would want to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, these are straight up fascists, and the Republican Party is a fascist party. So this doesn't surprise anyone or shouldn't. 62% of Americans believe that the Supreme Court bases its decisions more on the justices' political views than the Constitution and the law. 62% are also in favor, surprise, surprise, of changing the, the uh, current lifetime appointment to a one-time 15-year term, um, which would be great, except that's never going to happen. 78% of Republicans say they want to see Trump run for president in 2024. Oh, great. The Texas Senate passed a bill requiring transgender youth to compete on sports teams that match their birth gender, but not the gender they identify with because Texas. Chicago Mayor, this is in local news, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot accuses the Fraternal Order of Police of trying to induce an insurrection in opposition to vaccine mandates. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. Uh, Darren LaHood, one of our local uh, Republican schlubs down here, is getting ready to run for re-election. And the responses to his Facebook outreach are predictably deranged. I just dipped into them today to for this podcast. Here's an example. We need one who has conservative values and stands with them 100% of the time. Vote no on these outrageous bills Dems trying to pass now. We will be watching. Any politician that doesn't have the MAGA mindset doesn't get my vote. Save America people from these policies of the left. That's, you know, one of the more literate ones. Uh, and a shorter one, give back that money your father got for you. Trump 2024. Who's now, who are they talking about? Oh, well, oh, Darren LaHood's dad. Darren LaHood's dad. 
Trump would be nothing except for the largest his <laughs> racist dad. father gave him. Yes. But, you know, but that's the MAGA mindset, honey. It's uh-huh. Uh-huh. not remembering things that make me feel bad. Now, we're not going to mention which of the children uh, you had to accompany to traffic court no. this week. <laughs> but you went to traffic court. With one of the children this week. Early, early, early. Um, and you, you found it to be working smoothly. Very egalitarian. It was full um, uh, of people of all different shapes and sizes. Run very smoothly. And I couldn't have asked for better. Got to say, they run a, a tight traffic court in Sangamon County. And there were there were two people there with the same name. That caused yeah, that you cracked everyone up. up. They called up and one gentleman was very emphatically uh, tall and white. And one was shorter and black. And they both had the same name. And it was and, an Irish name. And it was, it was very, it was a very <laughs> Irish name. Surprise, surprise. And I got to say, I've never heard a bunch of people facing traffic violations laugh so hard in my life. That's very funny. The whole court cracked up. And I thought, if I were the judge, I, I got to, if, if she planned this, genius. genius. Yeah. Because yeah. it took the tension out of the room. Patty Orion. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> There's two of them. <laughs> Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Claire McCatskill. Oh. Uh, Claire. Her name is Claire. She's an adorable little kitten. And she is the OG crock blocker drift glass. Oh, my. She turns crocs, the shoes, into kitten beds. And you can't wear those shoes if your adorable little kitten is sleeping in them. Therefore, Crocs blocked. What are we? Are we in negotiation with her agent? Because I think I know because Croc blockers, she should join them right away. Adorable yeah. kitty, adorable little kitten is a Croc blocker spokes critter. Come on, yeah. yeah. Of course, Claire eats freshly poured kitten food. Our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cats and kittens will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured. Freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Claire at our Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty dog or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions. Mm -hmm. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hashtag fire to joy. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, our PayPal postal address information, merch, GoFundMe, Buy me a coffee, et cetera, et cetera. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, please get someone else to listen to. We would really appreciate that. We would. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, little gal, for the record, the Internet Kitties have always had a contempt citation for Steve Bannon. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.